Okay, so hello and welcome back to another Unity tutorial. In this video, we'll be going through a modular character controller that I built recently. We'll be going through the code, I'll be explaining how it all works, and hopefully giving you all an understanding on how to build your own. I hope you're looking forward to it, let's get started. But first, I'd like to thank Admix for sponsoring this video. Admix is a platform designed to help devs monetize their game without interrupting the player's experience by seamlessly placing ads inside the game world. It takes less than one hour to get set up and with no coding required, just drag and drop the ad placements into your game. It's also fully integrated with Unity and Unreal Engine. There's also an online dashboard with plenty of analytics to help you optimize as you go. Check it out by following the link in the description down below. So I guess the first thing is to show you the character controller. So we've got a capsule. As I move my mouse around, the capsule rotates to aim wherever I'm looking. If I move up and down, the camera rotates. This is using Cinemachine. I've got a uh, collider so that when I tilt it upwards or when the camera goes down to the ground, it collides with the ground as opposed to going through it. Okay, so I can look up in the air and then I can look down to the ground and I've got clamping so that I can't look too low or too high, okay? Obviously the sensitivity can be all tweaked. Right now it's probably a bit too high. Uh, I've got jump, okay, obviously jumping. WASD to move around. Keep in mind, this is not using the rigid body built-in physics. This is using my own code and we're using the Unity character controller to actually move the character around. If we go up the ramp and go down the ramp, it's really smooth, okay? Obviously if I made this even steeper, then we wouldn't be able to go up it. The character controller has a slope limit uh, that you can set to basically stop it going up ramps that are too steep. Uh, I can jump up here, I can jump down here, okay? I can jump off the edge, everything all works. It's really nice and smooth. And it's really easy to add bits to this, remove parts, you know, make new characters and decide this character can jump and can run around but maybe doesn't have gravity or whatever. You can easily just add and remove different parts because I've made it really modular. And let's get into the code now. Okay, so over in Unity, what do we have? Well, on the player game object, okay, as children, I've got just the body, okay, the body and, and the eyes, just purely visual, there's just renderers, uh, there's no actual colliders on there. Then for the player uh, root itself, as you can see, there's the capsule collider, but instead of using a capsule collider, I've used the built-in character controller. And this doesn't actually, you know, move your character for you, there's no input with this. It purely has a move function that you have to call, okay, so we still have to calculate the movement and pass it into here, but it handles collisions going up slopes, okay? So if I say move forward into the slope, it knows based off the slope limit and the step offset, you know, can it go up here and if so, move it up. So it actually handles going up slopes for us. We have to do something ourselves to handle going down slopes. Uh, otherwise it's a bit jittery as you go down, it's a bit weird. Um, but yeah, so the scripts we have here, okay, character controller. I'm using the new input system. I've got the player input on here. And I'm actually using this thing you may not have seen before, the flow machine. This is using a Unity add-on called Bolt, Bolt, and this is a paid add-on. Um, I don't know what's happening with this uh, because soon they're releasing Bolt 2 and Unity has acquired Bolt. So something may be going on there. You guys might actually be able to get this for free. There's no promises there though. I'm not sure what's going on, but you guys can code all this anyway. I just think it's really simple for input. So all the logic is in code in these C-sharp scripts I'm gonna go into in a minute. But as for actually calling the methods in them, I've used the uh, this flow graph, okay, to say when I do the movement input, call set movement input and pass in the output, which is a vector two or a vector three. Uh, I think it's a vector two, yeah. And then also when I release movement, so you know when I let go, that'll be a vector three of or a vector two of zero zero. Pass that in as well. Obviously, as I said, we'll look at the code in a minute. And for looking, okay, so when I move my mouse around, we call the look method in the camera script, passing in however much I move the mouse left, right, up and down. And then when we jump, we say, okay, if we're grounded, uh, if that is true, then add force upwards. Okay, I've got a script that handles force for the player. Now, as I said, these things here, you can all go and do in your code. You can write a script to effectively replace this. I just think it's really nice and simple for doing this kind of thing with input. Um, but yeah, if we actually jump into the code now, okay, I've got these different scripts, these four different scripts. The first one we'll look at is the movement handler. So one thing about moving a character controller is Unity recommends, because you get weird behavior otherwise, that you only call the move method, which is down here, once every frame. You don't want to call it more than once a frame. It goes weird if you do that, okay? I've had quite a few problems with it. So if I need to call it once per frame, it might seem like I need to have one script for my character controller with all the logic chucked in there and then stuff for like gravity and forces as optional, you know, settings and balls and stuff and having tons of like settings at the top. But I'm not really a big fan of having one script that does everything. I'd like to separate things out and only have what I need. So the way I came up with, I'm not saying I'm the first person to ever do this, but I didn't see anyone else doing this. Okay, so obviously I have reference to the character controller and I have a list of movement modifiers. 
And all a movement modifier is, is something that returns a vector free value, okay? So what's gonna happen is all the different ways we can move, so via movement input, WASD, via gravity, via jumping and adding a force or getting you know knocked back in a game because you get hit with an explosion, okay? All these different things are different movement modifiers. And what happens is this class stores a list of those and every frame, so in the update, what do we do? We say, all right, our movement this frame is vector 3.0. And then now let's loop over all of those modifiers and just add on their value. And we're left with our final movement vector, okay? So that'll add up our movement input and our gravity and everything else, okay? Once that's all been added up, we call move and we call move once, okay? I could call it in all those other scripts, but as I said, you get weird behavior, jumping gets a bit weird because the grounded check messes up and yeah, it's, it's a bit of a mess. So this is how I do it. And the way I actually add and remove from this list of modifiers is with a simple public method to add a modifier, remove a modifier. Then over here, I've got my movement input processor. This technically, I know jumping is input, but I count this just for the WASD input. So what it is, is it inherits, sorry, implements I movement modifier, okay? Which means it has to have this vector free value down here, okay? The kind of stuff we have reference to, we have reference to the character controller to grab its velocity down here somewhere, yeah, down there. Uh, we have reference to the movement handler. That's the thing I just showed you, okay, the movement handler. The reason we have reference to that is in our on enable and on disable, we add ourselves to that list and we remove ourselves from the list. Now, technically all of these different movement modifiers have the on enable add on disable remove. So I could actually make a base class and just have that in there. So technically, yes, I can you know abstract that down into that class just to get it away from here, but it's fine. Um, then I have, ref uh, not reference, sorry, have some settings, my move speed and my acceleration. I store my current speed because I don't want it to be snappy. I don't want to just, when you move, move, when you stop, stop. I want to have some kind of acceleration and deceleration rate. So obviously I use this value as the acceleration and this is where I store the current speed. So when I press forwards, instead of immediately going to the move speed, I uh, go between whatever I, my current speed is and my move speed and I need to store my velocity last frame and my input the last time I did input. Because with the new Unity input system, it doesn't actually tell you every single frame what the, your input is. It actually is a lot more efficient. It only raises the event and tells you whenever it changes. So if you press W to move forwards, it'll just raise the thing once saying, you know, a vector of uh, zero, one, right? Zero on the X, one on the Y, because you're moving forwards. And until you release that key or press a different key, that's all that happens. So we can't, I mean, we technically can read every frame if we want to, but there's no reason to just store whatever was the previous input direction. And then reference to the main camera because my movement is relative to where I'm looking. So I, you know, cache a reference to that over here. Okay. In start, as I said, cache a reference to the main camera and every frame move. This set movement input method has no references because the only place it's called is in my bolt graph. So you remember back over in Unity, I had the uh, thing saying, you know, based on my movement input, call a method set movement input. This is it, okay? Just simply sets that vector to over here. And then every frame, what do we do? Well, we um, take our target speed, okay? And then we alter the current speed. As I said, this is about acceleration. So we go between our current to our target by acceleration and then by time.delta time, because obviously we want it to be frame independent. Um, I get the forward and the right vector for the camera because I need to move relative to the camera's forward and right vector. Uh, I then set the Y's to be zero because if I'm aiming up or down at the ground or the ceiling, you know, I don't want any of that to influence where I move. I want to move only on the X and the Z axis. And I normalize the vector so that obviously it's not like, because otherwise what would happen is as I look up and down, I would move faster and slower, which would be a bit weird. So I need to normalize those. And then down here, I simply say, if my speed is not zero, okay, so basically if I'm trying to move, okay, via my input, then use my input and multiply it by forward and right vectors. And that gives me my, my movement. Otherwise, if my target speed is not, oh, sorry, is zero, that means I've released my, my keyboard, my, my keys. But even though I've released them, I still want to move because I've got some deceleration. As soon as I release my keys, I move for like another half a second, however long, right? So I need to just take my previous velocity and set that as my movement direction. And then um, I set the value and by setting value, remember value is the thing our movement handler reads every frame. So this is actually how much movement this script is contributing to. And then I simply cache my previous velocity. Now th this isn't even being used yet really, or sorry, this is being used. Um, it's been used for this. I also will be end up, I will end up using it for animation 
So if I'm running into a wall, I won't have my legs moving like I'm actually running into the wall. Uh, a lot of games will have it so you run, your character's running, and then as you get to a wall and you try running into it, you just kind of stop running or you don't run as fast. Because it looks really stupid if you're just running into the wall. Maybe that's what you want, but it, it depends on the game. Now I could get away with just having that one script on the player, okay, and I would do movement input and it would work. But obviously I want more things. So, for example, I want my player to receive forces like knockback. So, I need reference to the character controller to check if it's grounded. Because obviously when you hit the ground in a game, like as you land, any vertical forces on the y-axis kind of usually just get negated or even if you want to on here you can uh, if you want to make your character bouncy you can uh, set them to be negative instead when they hit the ground you know, it's, it's up to you how you want to implement it but i don't want my character to bounce off the ground um, so that's the thing this is really really easy for you to modify the behavior based on you know how your game is uh, reference to the movement handler obviously to add and remove uh, myself from the list and then mass and drag when it comes to adding forces and drag for uh, dampening the forces. I have my value, obviously that's the thing I need for uh, the movement modifier. And then I store whether I was grounded last frame, that's just for some jumping things. Because the problem is in here, I say um, like if I'm grounded then you know that, that affects the, the y velocity being zero. Uh, and I had a problem where if I jump the frame, so if I jump uh, before this update tick, then what happens is it sets my uh, y to be up because I'm going to jump and then it comes here and says but you're on the ground so don't jump just reset it so I need to make sure that this only uh, happens if I wasn't grounded the previous frame okay and then every frame I store whether I was grounded and then what I do is I say uh, set the value to zero or vector 3.0 if the magnitude is less than 0.2 this 0.2 is just an arbitrary value it basically means if the once the force gets really really small just treat it as zero. Otherwise, what you'll notice is as it gets really small, like 0.000 or something, you'll still be sliding. Like if you, even if you stand still and it's been like half an hour, you'll still be sliding ever so slightly. It'll look a bit weird. So you want some kind of cutoff point that's not really noticeable, but it'll make the game feel a bit better. And then over here, obviously we want to um, lerp our value because um, every single frame, once we've added a force, we don't want it to just stay there. Otherwise, as you jump, you'll just fly off into the sky. You need it so um, we always dampen the forces down by drag and then obviously time to delta time to stop it from uh, being frame dependent. We want it to be, regardless of your frame rate, you always you know take the same amount of time to, to dampen. For gravity, it's pretty much the same thing, an eye movement modifier, okay? The controller is needed to check if we're grounded, movement handler to add ourselves to it. We've got um, the grounded pull magnitude, okay, this is something that I added quite recently because I had this problem where as you go down a ramp what happens is I think if you think in paint okay you've got your ramp here as you go up the ramp what happens is you try and move forwards and then the character controller is smart enough to push you up so you actually end up here which is where you want to be then you try and move forwards into the ramp and you end up here and the point is like obviously this is on a frame by frame basis it's basically like this you move in up in up and it's so negligible right the point is it looks really smooth in the game but when you're going down a ramp, what happens is you go forwards and you go forwards faster than gravity pulls you down. So you go forwards and then you kind of drop. Then you go forwards and you drop. Then you go forwards and you drop, forwards and you drop. And what happens is that that's what it looks like in the game. As you go forwards, you then drop down. You go forwards, you drop down. Now this doesn't all, uh, just look weird. It also means that when you move forwards while you're going down a ramp, you can't jump because for this entire time here, you're not grounded, okay? Only for these brief periods where you're hitting the ground are you allowed to jump. And even then it's quite awkward. So... You want to make sure that when you're on the ground, um, going down a ramp basically, that you add more gravity. You need more gravity than your movement basically. So that for every bit you move forwards, you go down and it ends up just being like this and it looks really smooth in the game. As you saw when I go down the ramp, it's quite smooth. So just tweak with this value. I've got it as 50 in here, but in the actual game, I ended up tweaking it to be uh, a value of five worked well. You know, if you put it too high, then you can't jump. If you put it too low, then you jitter as you're going down the ramps. It's all about tweaking till it feels good. Obviously, I store the gravity magnitude, which will be minus 9.81 by default. So I just cache that right away. And then I check whether I was grounded last frame. I need the same thing as I had in the force receiver. We have our value that is then calculated, as I've said before, in our movement handler. We add ourselves and remove ourselves from the list. And then every frame, we handle the gravity calculation. So if we're on the ground, then we just have a slight, oh, sorry, no, yeah, if we're on the ground, we have our grounded pull magnitude, okay? And that means that as we go down the ramp, we stay on the ramp. If we were grounded last frame, but we're not grounded now, then set it to zero. That's basically meaning 
we've just jumped. And the reason we do this when we just jump is so that like, obviously we have a really high negative value, the frame before we jump. So when we jump, if we don't set it to zero, then it'll be like really negative and our jump will like immediately get pulled back down to the ground. Obviously you want it to be zero the second you leave the ground, the frame you leave the ground. And then otherwise, it just means we're falling. So if we're falling, then just keep adding to the Y, okay? Just keep adding and adding and adding. And eventually you'll hit the ground. And when you hit the ground, you'll then make it negative until you jump, you'll make it zero again. And the whole thing works just fine. Even if you don't jump, just walking off a ledge, it works just fine. Okay, and then we just store the ball every single frame so that we can use it in the next frame. Then if you look in the inspector over here, we have our movement handler. I've got all the references set up, okay? So the input processor has reference to the controller and the movement handler, these are the settings. Gravity has reference to the same things as well, has the settings. Force receiver has references and settings. So right now I can press play and everything will work, okay? And the really great thing about this is while I'm playing, I can easily just turn things on and off, right? So I can, for example, go up the ramp, go down the ramp, cool, okay? I can then uh, turn off gravity and then just walk to the side. Whoops, I'm changing it uh, in the prefab. Yeah, that's a bad thing. Okay, turn off the gravity. Okay, and now as you see, I walk across, gravity is effectively gone. Uh, if I turn gravity on, I fall back down. Okay, force receiver, if I press space, I don't jump, but the force is actually being added. The update tick isn't going on, meaning I could press space about, you know, five times or whatever, turn it on, I'll just go boing into the air, but that's fine. And then gravity kicks in, I fall back down. I can turn off the movement input processor. I can still jump and fall down because the gravity and the force receiver are on, but I can't press WASD to move around, okay? Turn it back on, everything works just fine. So yeah, that's it for this video. Hope you enjoyed. Let me know down below if you want to see anything else. This was more of an advanced tutorial. It was meant to be more of an advanced tutorial and apparently most of you guys like that anyway. Let me know down below what you want to see next. And I've actually done a community post, I think yesterday or the day before asking for ideas. I've already got tons of ideas. So have a look on there. If your ideas are already there, then just upvote them, like them, whatever. But if you've got any ideas that aren't on there, then feel free to uh, post them too. Thanks as always for watching, I'll see you in the next one, and goodbye. But of course, before I go, I've got to thank my patrons. Special thanks to Taylor Rustio, Francisco Lira, John Selig, Liz Kimber, Ansikan, Sam Marcus, Matt Fryer, Ellen, Fabian Reno, Malvin, Zumran, David McDermott, Exit, Josh Folsom, Beardodai, Dustin Miller, Rack, Yoris Letter, and Rene. If anyone else is able to help support the channel monetarily, link to my Patreon is down below. If not, there are also links down below to other social media, such as Twitch, Twitter, and Discord, as well as our Udemy course and our website. If you could check any of those out, that'd be greatly appreciated. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching, and goodbye.